So Puccini Vineyard, where we are right now, uh, has always been a bit of a unicorn vineyard in that um, there's no real great reason for its existence. It was planted in 1906. It's one acre. It's surrounded by a rock-walled clow that the original person who planted it uh, built. He was a stonemason. In fact, there's these incredible rock walls all over this part of Kenwood. Um, and it became even a bit more of uh, a unicorn during the fires in October um, of 2017. Uh, in that this whole part of Sonoma Valley was right in the middle of some of the hottest, um, worst sections of the fire. Um, the Puccinis, who have lived here for decades, unfortunately lost their home as the fire came ripping down a gully and just eviscerated pretty much everything in its path. But what's amazing is that the stonemason uh, who built the wall essentially saved the vineyard from the fire because the wall, even though all the plants and everything around the wall burned, um, the fire essentially burned around the vineyard. There's some little spots where it was able to come into the vineyard and we, it picked off some vines. We probably lost, I don't know, 30 to 40 vines in here. But what's amazing is that the majority of the vineyard is actively growing and healthy right now, which is um, really pretty incredible to see, particularly given how charred the rest of the landscape is. Um, around it. So it's, um, you know, once again, the, the myth of Puccini and it's whopping one barrel of wine we get off of it every year uh, continues to live on. Um, the other incredible thing about the fires is that um, it's took out so many trees that it's completely changed all of the sight lines all over the valley. So this used to be, used to not be able to see this vineyard from the road, you now can. And it also could be that you couldn't really see much of the rest of the valley. And now when you look across the valley, over here, you can see all the way across to um, the Mayacamas range, including all the way across to like Montecillo Vineyard, all the way up on the top of the mountain on the other side of the, the valley. So um, it's just a, been a kind of a weird and, uh, you know, horrifying thing with the, you know, the fire caused so much destruction back here, but it also has just been so weird to live in a completely um, changed landscape. I think what we learned about the fire is that it is a fickle, fickle thing. You know, there's homes that got wiped out that didn't seem like they should. And then there's homes that are standing in the middle of burn zones that are still upright, um, oftentimes thanks to really heroic work by um, first responders. Um, but it also applies to vineyards where, for whatever the reason, just randomly we'll have these vines that got singed or burned out. Uh, in the small areas where the fire was able to get into the vineyard, but then it'll be surrounded or next to five completely healthy vines. So um, it's just been a very, it's a very strange thing to see, to just sort of see these um, burnt dead vines just randomly in the midst of other vines that are just completely happy and healthy and putting out fruit and acting like it's just any other growing season. I mean, that's pretty crazy. So, you know, just the, the basics about this beautiful little vineyard, um, it was planted almost entirely to Zinfandel, although there's a little bit of interplanted, there's a couple table grapes, Flame Tokay, and one that we actually can't get a DNA match on. Uh, there's one burger vine, which is a very high production white variety that um, is randomly there. And uh, there's also uh, one Petit Syrah vine. But other than that, the rest of it is just this beautiful um, Zinfandel that's been, you know, dry farmed on this very steep hillside um above schultz and lawndale road area of kenwood um it's kind of been uh hiding in plain sight for uh 110 years